Hey, this is Eric, and in this video, we're taking a look at an engaging Google Slides activity for students called the Tier List. I am always looking for ways to engage students in critical thinking and communication. Recently, I've been working on an activity that gets students comparing, contrasting, and prioritizing concepts, as well as defending the rationale for their claims. This activity is based on something called a Tier List. A tier list is a concept that was originally developed in the video game culture where people would rank characters or items from a game based on how important they were. Typically, the levels would be letter grades such as A through F, but often with the addition of an S level that would be the highest rank, which came from the Japanese word for exemplary. Over time, people have used the tier list format to rank a wide range of concepts, which I thought would work great for students to apply to subject matter content in school. Let's take a look at how this activity works and how you can get your own copies of the templates to use with your students. The tier list activity is broken up into three parts. The entire activity should fit easily into a portion of a class period, probably 15 to 30 minutes. The first part is student ranking. So in the first part of this activity, the students are going to be working by themselves. Students will get their own copy of a slide deck that will be used for the activity. In the slides, the students are going to be given a prompt, some topic, a concept, a question, and then the items that they're going to rank. For example, here we have best energy sources, or in this example, we have most influential battles of the Revolutionary War. Here's one where we have characters in Romeo and Juliet who have the most impact on the plot. Or here we've got most important paintings of the 20th century. Now, for the example I'm going to use here, we're just going to have a little bit of fun with it. We'll do best fast food restaurants. And I would actually encourage you, the first time you do with you, this with your students, do something that's just a little bit fun so that they can get used to the concept of how the tier list works. And then you can start applying it to your subject area content. Now, next in the slide deck will be the actual tier list, where the same items are going to appear as either text or images or a combination of both. For example, here is the one on the energy sources. Here we have the one for the influential battles. Next up, here's the tier list page for the characters in Romeo and Juliet. And then here's the one on the important paintings of the 20th century. Again, we'll be doing the one with the fast food restaurants. At this point, each student will drag and drop the items on the tier ranking slide from highest to lowest based on their opinion of how well each item meets the prompt. Now again, in this one, we were just saying best fast food restaurants, but it doesn't have to be just best to worst. It could be like healthiest fast food restaurants or fast food restaurants with the most variety or fast food restaurants with the best commercials. A lot of possibilities for what that prompt can be. And of course, you will adjust that to your content area. So let's go ahead and rank these. And there we go. Now, multiple items can be ranked with the same score and not every level has to have an item put into it. This ranking should be limited to maybe three to five minutes total. During this portion, students are thinking deeply about subject matter concepts, they're comparing, contrasting, and ranking those ideas. The second part of this activity is partner discussion. So in the second part of this activity, each student will work with a partner. The students will get together in pairs and compare their rankings. For example, here is our demo student that we did, and let's say this is their partner student that they are pairing up with most likely there will be several differences between how each student has ranked the items. Each student should identify one item that they disagree on with their partner, preferably an item that they ranked very differently. These items can be different between the paired students. For example, student number one may say, well, I put Chipotle at S tier and you put it all the way down at E tier, and that may be the one they want to talk about, whereas student two may be saying, oh, I've got Duncan up at S tier, and you've got it all the way down in D tier, and that may be the one they're going to talk about. So at this point, each student will now identify the item they chose and explain to the other student the reasoning for their ranking. 
Now, if during the discussion they end up changing their mind on something, the students are allowed to make changes to their rankings after the discussion. This part should be limited to about five minutes. During this portion, students communicate and defend the rationale for their conclusions with a partner while also being exposed to the viewpoints and arguments of their classmates. Part three of the activity is class discussion. In the third and final part of the activity, the students will work together as a whole class. Here, each student will submit their final rankings through a Google form that is provided on the last slide of their slide deck. When they click on that Google form link, they will get the Google form where they can fill out for each of the items what they chose for their final ranking. Once the students have submitted their forms, the teacher will display the class results for each item one at a time as a bar graph to show the overall tier rank for each item. As the teacher goes through each item one at a time, students may make a final argument to the class for or against the overall ranking. This class discussion should be limited to about one or two minutes per item. During this portion, students are engaging in full class discussion on the pros and cons of the class consensus. So if you would like to do this activity, there are two templates you will need for this, including a Google Slides template and a Google Forms template. Now you can get a copy of each of these templates using the links in the description below this video. Let's take a look at each of these. So when you get a copy of the Google Slides template, you'll see that the first several slides just contain directions and details for how to complete the activity. You can certainly just delete these slides before sharing this with your students. Next, you'll have a slide where you can type in the prompt for your students along with the list of the items they're going to be ranking. For example, we had our energy sources or revolutionary war battles, characters from Romeo and Juliet, and famous paintings, or of course, our fast food restaurants. For this example, we will stick with that. Next up, you'll have the slide with the tier list layout. Here you want to add the items for the students to drag and drop for the ranking. Now you can add these as images and or text boxes. For example, on the one with the energy sources, these are just text boxes, uh, but I did put emojis inside of them just to make them a little bit more identifiable. Same thing with the battles, the Revolutionary War. Um, and with the Romeo and Juliet, just text boxes, uh, no emojis in those. However, with the one I did for the famous paintings, actually inserted images that are gonna be uh, moved to rank those. And also the same thing for our fast food restaurants. Each of these are just an image that I've inserted. So we'll stick with that for this one as well. Now, the last slide in the slide deck is where you're going to put the link to the Google form that the students are going to fill out after they have their final rankings. Let's take a look at setting up that form. So when you get a copy of the Google form template, you'll see that it is a very simple form with one question per item. For each item, the student will be selecting the final ranking they chose for that item. To set up the form, simply type in your items in place of the placeholders I have there. Now, I set up the template for 10 items, but you may need more or less, and that's perfectly fine. You can simply duplicate the last item if you need more, or you can delete some items if you need less. Now, one quick note on the type of question that I am using here. Even though the students are only going to be picking one answer for each question, I did choose checkboxes rather than multiple choice. This is because the checkbox option generates a bar graph for the results, which I think that's easier to read than the pie charts that get created with the multiple choice option. Even though this is a checkbox question, which does allow for more than one choice, please instruct the students to just pick their final answer for each of the items. Once you have all your items added to your form, simply come up and click on the preview link up in the top right hand corner to get the live link for the form, copy that link, head back over to your slideshow, and then insert that as a link on the final slide by clicking insert, 
link, and then pasting in that link you just copied. So now that you have your slides and your form set up, it is time for your students to do the activity. You will want each student to get a copy of this slideshow, which you can do in several ways. If you use Google Classroom, you could create and share a copy of that slideshow with each student, or you could share the slideshow as view only and have the students make a copy, or you could share a forced copy link of the slideshow with your students. Whatever method works best for you and your students. And once every student has their copy of the slideshow, they will work through the activity just like we described before as a quick review. Part one will be the student ranking where the students go in and drag and drop the items to put them on their tier list slide based upon their opinion of how well they meet the prompt. And then part two will be partner discussion where they get in pairs and compare their rankings, identify an item they disagree on, and then explain the reasoning for their ranking. And then part three is the class discussion. Here each student will submit their final rankings through the Google form, and then you will display those class results for each item and students can make an argument for or against the final rankings. And that's it. Critical thinking and communication are such important skills for our students to develop and improve. This tier list activity provides a quick, engaging, and fun way for students to work on these skills. I encourage you to try out this activity with your students. And of course, feel free to make modifications to best fit your class. If you do use this activity, I would love to hear how it goes, including the topic you used and the results from your students. And for all the rest of my educational technology resources, be sure to visit my site at controlaltachieve.com, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to my YouTube channel, sign up for my email newsletter, and check out my book, Control Alt Achieve, Rebooting Your Classroom with Creative Google Projects. Thanks so much, and take care.